Hello, I'm Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GRE, a leading provider of online GRE prep courses and video lessons. Now, what you're about to watch is actually a lesson taken directly from one of our full courses. So if you like what you see, head over to dominatethegre.com, check out our course offerings, and consider signing up. But for now, enjoy this free lesson. And the Magic X is particularly useful for comparing fractions on quantitative comparisons. So again, you might be thinking to yourself, Brett, why are you bothering to teach me a shortcut for adding fractions? Okay, fine. Use your calculator if you just want to add fractions, although I still think the Magic X will save you time. But for sure on quantitative comparison questions, this little trick, this Magic X, is super, super helpful. And here's what I mean by that. What if you get to a situation where you have you know, a question like this? Now, the question probably wouldn't be this literally straightforward comparing two fractions, although I have seen questions like this on the GRE. But maybe you do a little bit of manipulation. If you remember my quantitative comparison lessons, maybe you mirror the two quantities and you get to a point where you're essentially just comparing two fractions. Well, sometimes the fractions are really darn close. Like one third and three eighths are pretty close. And if you didn't remember the fractional equivalency of three eighths, for example, maybe you wouldn't quickly be able to know which is bigger. Enter the magic X. So go ahead and press pause, compare these on your own. I know it's not rocket science, but let's come back and I'm gonna show you how to use the magic X to quickly compare these fractions as well. Go ahead and press pause. All right, so how'd you do? I'm sure you got the right answer, but let me just kind of walk you through it, show you how the magic X works, and then also show you another little kind of trick on how to solve these types of, of comparisons. But first things first, stick with your strategies for quantitative comparisons. What's the very first thing you do? You eliminate answer choice D. Why? Because they're actually gonna be a number. It's not gonna depend on the variables. Even if you didn't have a calculator, somebody could figure out what one-third actually equals, somebody could figure out what three-eighths actually equals, and compare those things even if you can't. The answer is not D. And then another thing you might look at is just to say, could they be equal? I know that's not really the strategy because we don't have a variable in one column, but you should be able to quickly recognize on this one at least that those things aren't equal. In other words, if you scale up one-third, two-sixths, three-ninths, three-ninths does not equal, so one-third equals three-ninths. That's not the same as three-eighths, and therefore they're definitely not going to be equal, so I'll cross off answer choice C quickly just based on that recognition. One of the two columns is bigger. The question is which one is bigger, and the magic X can help us figure that out. And the magic X basically is the first two parts of that formula. Don't worry about the denominators because I'm not adding them together. You simply multiply up and across, and that gives you the value that you kind of mentally put in quantity A, right? So eight times one is eight. And then you multiply up and across the other direction for the quantity that essentially is the quantity of B. Three times three is nine. Now, does 3 eighths equal 9? Of course not. That doesn't make any sense. Does 1 third actually equal 8? No, of course not. Doesn't make any sense. But what it does do is it shows you the relative size. And whichever is bigger is the bigger fraction. Amazing how that works, isn't it? And 9 is bigger than 8, and therefore 3 eighths is bigger than 1 third. So the correct answer is answer choice B. Really cool, huh? Really cool trick. File this away. Remember it because I think it'll save the day and help you get you know, at least one, maybe a couple more right answers on test day as you're comparing those fractions. Now you could also always convert fractions to decimals and a lot of students, it's a lot easier to compare decimals, right? So if instead this had been expressed as 0.3333 and 3 eighths is expressed as, you remember the fractional or the decimal equivalency of 3 eighths, 0.375, it's a lot easier to compare decimals, isn't it? So if you can put a fraction in decimal form, you simply work left to right until you get to a number that's different. So in this case, the threes are the same. So, so far, so good. In this case, I have a three. In this case, I have a seven. This one's bigger. 
because that next number, 7, is bigger than this next number, 3. So that's how you simply compare when you're looking at decimals. Hello again. So did you find this video helpful? If so, just imagine how much you would learn from one of our full courses. Head over to dominatethegre.com, check out our full course offerings. I hope you choose to partner with us so that I can further empower you to dominate the GRE.